Welcome to Walking in Your Purpose. This is Thursday Night 8 with Linda Faith. It's time to discover the gift God has for you. I'm bringing awareness to what God has for you and the purpose behind your pain. If you have passion in your soul and a gift you haven't unleashed, well, well, then let's talk about it. Having served in the United States Army for the last 18 years and continuing to serve as a service leader to inspire, motivate, guide, and assist residents, I'm bringing a contemporary vibe to being happy and living your dream on purpose. Each week, I will introduce you to a life filled with purpose and how that purpose is being used to glorify God. Describing the tips, resources, and strategy to set you up for success. So now, let's jump right in and discover the gift God has for you. Greetings, Facebook. This is Chandra Gore, and I am a lens of faith. Thank you all for joining us on this very special episode. I know today isn't Thursday, but God had to have his way. Amen. So thank you all who are joining us on the live line on this Friday afternoon, this Friday evening. And I am blessed by the best, God himself. And on the line, I have my brother in arms, Chicago native, Reverend Clarence Cox is joining me tonight on the show. How are you? Hey man, God bless you. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Amen. Doing good. Awesome. Blessed. Awesome. God gave me an extra day to rest because I sure need it. I know that's right. Everything happened for a reason. Amen. 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 So let me just tell you a little bit about Reverend Cox. He is a very passionate servant of God who believes in empowering others to excel despite many failures and setbacks of life experiences. He speaks hope restoration and deliverance into the lives of people that God has allowed him to encounter. He has a very strong desire for ministerial outreach to those who are physical, mental, and spirit and spiritual bondage. He has endeavored to do God's divine will without compromise. He has adopted an evangel evangelistic motto to evangelize the lost at any cost. He is wholeheartedly invested in standing firm against the current systems of our community, which seek to divide. Reverend Cox seeks to utilize the spiritual gifts God has given him to edify, empower, and enrich the lives of persons whom will openly receive truth. He is vigilant, extremely patient, loving, caring, supportive, and above all, one who truly loves God. He's a native to Chicago, Illinois. He is a retired combat veteran serving this country faithfully in two branches of service, the United States Marine Corps and the United States Army. He has a semi-large family of 14, which includes his beautiful bride, rib of support, Danya, eight children and five grandchildren. Reverend Cox is educated as, and has earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Human Resource Manage Management from American Military University and seeking to start his doctorate degree this year. God bless you. God has blessed Reverend Cox with, with plenty of abilities to impact people on their level. He is the CEO of the MOVE Project, Men of Victory and Empowerment, host of the Monday Mandate, co-host of Keeping, uh, Keeping the Faith Fishbowl Radio Network in Dallas, Texas, member of the Pulse TV show featured on the Now Network, inspiring author, poet, motivational speaker, counselor, coach, biblical preacher, teacher, and more. Reverend Cox is a member of Mount Olivet Baptist Church under the esteemed leadership of Reverend Dr. Wesley K. McLaughlin. He's serving as a member and a leader in the prison ministry, Courage to Heal ministry, altar ministry, brotherhood ministry, military support ministry, School of Prophets Ministry, and is the current overseer of the community outreach in Hopewell, Virginia. His desire is to serve God in whatever capacity that God leads him without compromise. He stands ready and willing to fight on the battlefield for the Lord. God bless mm -hmm. you, my brother. That is a very powerful uh, bio, and I, God is doing something great with you. Amen. I thank God for for just being on the program, for God using me the way he does. Amen. 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 
Well, I've been seeing you moving and grooving. I've been tuning in to the Monday mandate and I've been blessed uh, on several occasions myself. So I thank you for that. I really yeah. do. I really do. Thank you for that. Thank you for doing what God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. So let's just jump right in. I know a lot of people are, um, they were Let's waiting on it yesterday, but hey, we're going we gonna to dive in right now. I think Dr. Nia just joined, or is that Amika? Amika. One of them just joined. Greetings, whoever that is that just joined. Hey, um, um, as a native to Chicago and as a combat veteran, Marine and Army, how has the situations in Chicago affected you personally, or how does that resonate with you? Well, being being a neighbor of Chicago, I've seen a lot of things growing up. Um, as we're well aware, Chicago is a very big city, um, and there's no secret that there's a lot of a um, lot of negative activities, a lot of gangs, a lot of violence, a lot of drug trafficking, things of that nature. And I was just blessed um, to live. I was blessed to survive. Um, what most people would say is an unsurvival in it is an insurmountable task that you cannot survive, but I'm a living witness that God can and will sustain you even in a place where there's so much activity. But it resonates with me because when I left Chicago and I went to the military, I had a background of negativity. As a matter of fact, I didn't even transition into the military well. Uh, my first two years, I was what they call a problem child. Um, I was a person that was always doing things that I had no business doing because I could not conform to structure. But what happened was God continued, God sent me an angel. I will Come tell you on, all this. Come he on, sent God. me an angel. And that angel was in a form of this major. I forgot his name, but there was a major there. And he took me to the side and he said to me, he said, you have a lot of potential. Don't mess it up behind, um, following behind the wrong crowd. And I needed that because at the time my father and I were in disarray and I needed that father mentorship. And he took me to the side and he did that. And what happened with me was it was an immediate change. It allowed me to know that people wanted me, allowed me to know that people loved me, people cared about me. It didn't matter what their, what their race was, didn't matter what their creed or their religion was. They actually simply cared about me as a person. And that changed me. So what I did was I took the experiences from Chicago, the negativity, transformed it into a positive and start leading people in the way that they should go. So all negative experiences are not bad experiences. You know, it, it depends on how you how you view your perspective in that negative that will determine what the positive outcome is going to be. So I didn't allow the negativity from my childhood in Chicago to actually ruin the rest of my life. But I did learn from it. I use it as a platform. And I allow myself to be catapulted into another stratosphere where I was able to lead and train Marines and soldiers. Amen. To God be the glory. I, I, yeah. I'm glad that you said that. Some That's going to bless somebody right there. Because, right. you know, as a, as an Army Reserve liaison, um, when I was working in that capacity, I saw yeah. so many broken soldiers coming from broken homes and they just yeah. wanted to give up. They wanted to give up because they didn't know anything different. But mm -hmm. as I began to t speak to them and talk to them, hand them a book, say, read this passage here. It encouraged them to keep going. Mm -hmm. And I saw them on graduation day. And, you know, that warmed my heart to see that that had an impact on them. So you mm -hmm. never know what you can say in the midst of somebody's journey that can turn that thing around, no matter how, you know, bad they think their experience is or how bad it really is. You know, all all it takes is for somebody to grab you and say, hey, follow me. I'll lead the way, you know, That's stay, right. the course. stay the course, you know, keep fighting and you will come out victorious. Amen. Amen. I agree. Amen. So something uh, about your bio was really interesting to me. Tell the listening audience about this move project. I, I'm really, you know, wanting to know more about it and what prompted you to start this amazing uh, project. Well, it's, it's really a project in its infancy. It's in the beginning stages. Um, it's called Men of Victory and Empowerment, uh, the acronym MOVE. And the reason what, what happened was God started dealing with me about men. I, I seen men. I was absent of men structure in my life. And what happened was, is I started adopting these men in the military that, that gave me positive reinforcement. God started dealing with me about the men. Now, on the news, we see a portrayal of men that really isn't true. Um, we, we see a portrayal of men that really is 
is really tainted by the media. It's really spun around by the media. But what I want to do is I want to introduce men, men that are struggling to be single parents, men that are working four or five jobs to make sure their family is, is fed, men that are really, that are going the distance. And what's happening is you need men to move the family structure. You need men to move a generation from, from the next generation to the next. We need men to be able to fortify our young men and our young women um, that, are out, that, are, that are outside the homes that are struggling themselves. So I'm going to utilize a group of men. I haven't, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do it yet. But I, it's going to be a company of men that's going to, we're going to take back our city. We're going to take back the streets. We're going to take back the home. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to allow these men to come back into society and reestablish themselves where society has not allowed them to reestablish. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them some tools in order for them to be mentors so that we can get these kids off the street. Because what's happening right now is we have a lot of young boys that are throwing their lives away through gun violence and drugs. The same thing that I had to go through in Chicago, I'm seeing now in Virginia and different parts of the world. So we want to use these men and bring the positiveness out of these men and reinforce them to reestablish them so that we can reconnect them with society and reconnect them with the lines of communication so that we can bring men on a positive scale and stop always playing and downplaying them as if they're so negative. Amen. You know, we need that. Can, can we get like 50,000 of you? <laughs> 50,000 <laughs> of Yes, to just duplicate this project. I, I really hope that God puts it on you and gives you the resources and tools you need to expand Bless this project. You. Once you get it up and running and, you know, it takes flight, I, I pray that it can expand and be global because we really need a project such as that. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. I agree. Man. We, we need to bring men back to the fold. Absolutely. So did you get an idea about this project from doing the uh, prison ministry? No. Well, actually, I got this idea of years before the prison ministry. But what happened with the prison ministry, the culmination of it was um, it allowed me to see another perspective that I never saw because I was okay. so focused on men that I forgot about women. I forgot about women that were in trouble and women that were incarcerated. So it allowed me to see that it not only affects the male, but also affects the females as well. Um, we have what they say, 98% of our prison system is filled by men right yeah. now. And so I'm looking at that, that vast number, but I, I, I always cannot forget about the women as well because the family structure is being, is being blown apart. The dynamics of the family structure is not even what its intended purpose is. So the prison ministry allowed me to, to, to do more in-depth looking at what the family structure is supposed to be and what it is today and how it is now it is now declining over over years you figure every five or ten years we've seen the family structure dynamic change now i'm not, I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of stuff about the family dynamic but it is really changing to the point where now what god intended for the family is not happening and we have to be able to show people what right looks like and allow them a biblical perspective so we can bring a nation back to God. Come on now. That's what it's all about. We got to start back, you know, at the basis. There's always been a base in some kind of way. The world has navigated away from the base of, of yes. what God intended. So I'm glad you said that. That's that's very, very true. Amen to that. Man, amen. So you see people, you know, that believe in their mind that they have failed on probably on a, a daily basis as you do your outreach ministries. How have mm -hmm. you made an impact in their lives to let them know that failure is not an option? And I want you to talk about the different ministries that you're working in in that aspect. Well, I, I see I see people who on a daily basis, they're dejected, they're rejected, they're depressed, oppressed, suppressed. I see people on a daily basis that try to have given up and they've thrown in the towel. I see people that hold their heads down and they're walking, trying to find themselves. I see people that are looking in places to find themselves except for the right place. And what I do is I encounter these people. I encounter these people in the barbershop. I encounter them at school. I encounter them on the street and outreach in church. I encounter these people so many different ways. And what I do is I, I find something to connect with them with. I find some, what do they like to talk about? What do they like to do? And most people will find, you'll find that when you start to tap into that, people will talk to you. 
And what I want people to do is to be able to open up that basket of hurt, open up that basket of rejection and, and, and put it on me. I, I feel like I'm the big brother that wants to carry the burden for you for a little while so they can lighten the load just for a few minutes. So I want to be able to allow them to open up. So what I do is I give them words of encouragement. I tell them what people have not told them in years or they've never heard. I tell them, I speak into their life because the Bible said that life and death and the power of the tongue, they, that love is shall eat the fruit thereof. So I try to give them a word of life and I tell them that how God sees them is different from how they are viewing themselves in the mirror. It's different from how people are portraying you. It's different from what your mind is telling you. And it's also different from what the devil is trying to get you to understand. So when I speak that into their lives to get them to understand that you are more than what you see, you have to tap into what's unseen and connect with the right source of power. People start to talk and they start to They'll go through their whole life and tell you their whole story. And I, being a, pa- a person that's patient, I can sit there all day and just listen. And what I do is I tell them all the time. Every time I see them, I say, did you do what I, tell you? Did, did you do what I told you to do? They say, no, I didn't do it yet. I need you to do it today. I, I, I put a mandate on them. See, what I, I, I'm, I'm nice, but I'm also commanding. I tell them what needs to happen. Uh, in order for their soul to be saved. I, Cause right now my, the soul of a person and what's mattered to me is, is really what matters to me the most. What is their soul package like? It's one thing for some people to look good on the outside, but what do you look like on the inside? What are we, what are we giving you that's going to allow you to illuminate God? What are we giving you that's going to allow you to look at life situations and say, these negative things are coming to shape me, to mold me, and to transform me. We need to have the ability to be able to give people a hope, a piece of hope, because that's what Jesus was. Jesus is the hope that we are looking for. The salvation is what we are accepting in the hope and, and, and the building with the Holy Ghost. We have to give that back to people. So what are we giving them. And so I try my best to to continue to have words of affirmation, um, words of encouragement, tell them to stop looking down on the ground to look up to Jesus, to look up to heaven, because he owns everything on earth and the count of a thousand hills belong to him. And he owns everything. If he created you, you have a portion of what it is that he has, that he has, um, that he's in charge of. You have a portion of the inheritance. So I'm, I'm thankful that God allows me to see these people on a daily basis. And when I don't see them, I'm actually looking for them. I'm looking to find out where they are. Because again, the person's soul to me is what matters the most. It matters more than money. It matters, it matters more than wealth, their homes, their jobs. I need to understand where they are spiritually. And, and working in the ministries in the church um, is, is, is a very tedious task. And, we, and we, we're dealing with people every day in the church. Now, the misconception is that everybody in the church knows God. The misconception is that everybody is saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. But the true nature is this, that people are coming to church because they're sick. People are coming to the hospital because they're trying to find the doctor of all doctors. They're trying to find healing for their soul. They're trying to be able to, again, reestablish and reconnect themselves with a higher power. And they don't know how to do that. And we have people that have been in church for 50 and 60 years that have fallen back into sickness and don't know how to come out of it. So it allows me to see another dynamic in the church of how how the people in the world are hurting just as bad as the people in the church. And so these ministries have allowed me to corral a lot of knowledge and have allowed me to be sensitive, to be sensitive to, to, to what people are in need of and allow me to continue to speak hope and life and not be so rugged and ragged toward them because we are expecting them to be on a, on a level that they haven't graduated from yet. Amen. It's interesting that you said, talked about, you know, people walking with their hair down. You know, I have a, um, a 16 year old son. And every time I used to see him walk, this was when he was uh, younger, but he used to hold his head down. Every time mm-hmm. I said, I said, Malik, hold your head up, put your chest out and put your shoulders back. Your name yeah. is King. You need to walk in royalty, son. I have to constantly encourage him. So now I see him walking with his head up. He's 16. He has a job. And, you know, our young men need to hear that on a yeah. daily basis, you know. Hold your head up. Don't be ashamed of who you are or where you came from because God getting ready to take you somewhere. That's right. Amen. You said, you said something. You said something that's so powerful. 
the posture of a person actually dictates their success. When you have, when you see a person that's slumping, when you see a person that has a, a, a lackadaisical or nonchalant attitude and their body position um, dictates how they feel. As a matter of fact, the clothes that you wear actually dictate how you feel for the day. So we have to be able to take our young men and our young women and let them know that there is, you, if, if you keep your eyes level, you can see longer. If you keep your eyes on the ground, that's where you're going to go. But if you keep your eyes set on something higher than what you are, that's where your intended purpose will be. So we have to be able to point the eyes in the direction and the head in the direction and allow the posture of the body to, to, to maintain itself in a rigid, relaxed state. Because again, what happens in the natural is an indication of what can happen in the spiritual. So can you imagine somebody who's always depressed and then they find God and then in, in the spiritual realm, they're depressed? Why? Because they really have not found out who they are and who they belong to. So we have to continue to fortify that within our young men, our young women. I think it go a long way. It, it will go a long way. And, and something else you mentioned about people that's been going to church for 50 years. You know, a lot of people, you know, go to church because they they were told to go to church. Just go to church, put yeah. your clothes on and go to church. And they do it out of routine and they're not learning anything. They're not embracing anything. They go there, they sit in the same spot every Sunday and they're not, you know, digesting anything because nobody has actually expressed to them or, or taught them that there's a message here. This is the yeah. message that needs to be implanted into your brain to cause the grooves in your brain, as Juanita Bynum said, to be set on a different path. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to her talk lately about the plasticity of the brain. And, you know, sometimes we, we do things out of repetition and we're not learning anything from it. It's just because mm -hmm. somebody told us to do it. Oh, that's a good idea. But what are we learning? What did you learn from church on Sunday? You know, a lot of people, they walk out, they put their hand up and walk out when the pastor come out because they, they don't want to hear that part. They just do mm -hmm. the person worship and then they walk on out. But the meat of the message is in, in, in the message that's coming forth from the pastor. Yeah. And, and, the re and the reason why that's happening, I will tell you, and I can tell you that you're passionate about that, is that a lot of people are not, you know, they remind me of the basket that the baby Moses was in. In order for the baby Moses to be traveling down down the, uh, the Nile River, I believe, he was enclosed. And that's what a lot of people that are coming to church, they're closed. They're not open, which means they're not readily available to receive. In order for you to be downloaded, things to be downloaded in you, in order for you to receive, you have to be willing, you have to be open. And a lot of people come to church with grudgingness. A lot of people come to church with their hands folded. A lot of people come to church with not believing that the power of God is real because they are not experiencing God during the week because of their prayer life, because of their, their, their Bible study, because of their, what I call, knee time with God, because they, they don't have, they don't, they're not exercising the disciplines. So when they come on Sunday morning, they are so empty that they don't have enough energy to even entertain anything. So they want the pomp and circumstance. They want the things that make them feel good for the moment. But when the, but when the, when the bread is being broken and the meat is being shared, which is going to convict them, they don't want that part of it because they're so used to, they're so used to the, to, to the activity of the church, the program of the church, that the conviction allows people to want to move from their seat to go home and be buried back into their depression because people are comfortable with where they are. And we have to get people to come out of their comfort zone because God didn't call us to be comfortable. He called us to be committed. Exactly. And, you know, you can't do much in, in your comfort zone. You got to be uncomfortable for God to be able to move and, and pull you That's and right. and, you know, get you out of what you normally used to, you know, and a lot That's of people, right. they don't like change, you know, like a lot of my family would not leave Chicago. And I'm just like, why not? If you say you miserable, you tired of this, you tired of that, just go, you know, but I, I've come to realize that a lot of people are just comfortable, like you said, right where they are and they don't want to be moved because moving would be something scary, something different, something new, you know, uneasy. And, you know, God wants us to be out of our comfort zone so he can be able to, you know, maneuver inside of us, you know, but that's another show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So That's you, right. you are just doing so many great things. You've dived into so many different ministries, and um, now you're on TV doing your thing. What does your beautiful bride think about all that you are doing these days? Oh, man, man, listen. When I first started doing all this stuff, I said, oh, my God, I said, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Um, but what I found out is that I found a balance. I okay. balance family with career and career with uh, extracurricular activities and, and ministry. I love ministry. And a lot of people that's around me will understand that I love ministry. I love to talk about God. I love to minister Jesus. I love to talk about the gospel. As a matter of fact, you can't shut my mouth about Jesus and the gospel. It's not even going to work because if, if, if I had to shut my mouth today, if they said you'll die tomorrow, if you don't stop talking about Jesus today, I'm a dead man. This is the way it is. But she she right now she's she's becoming comfortable with what I'm doing. Um, it is a lot it is a lot to take on, but she's proud of me. And that's one thing I shared with her was going on. And she told she tells me oftentimes, I'm so proud of what God is doing within you. You are really helping people. And she said, I can see the passion, the burning desire that you have. And she asked for a man that will believe in God. Now at the time, of course, I was out in the world doing what I wanted to do, but God showed her past what I was looking like, what I was doing. And she had, to me, I believe she has a prophetic anointing on her life. And she is coupled with me in order for me to, in order for me to grow. So I thank her for even sharing this life with me because without her, I would not be where I'm at right now. Amen. 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 May God keep his hand upon your marriage. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Tell the listening audience how you birthed Monday Monday, because all of a sudden I looked up and I started seeing Monday Monday, Monday Monday. I'm like, let me tune in to find out what's going on with Monday Monday and tell us all about it. What, what do you actually talk about on Monday Monday? Oh, well, I talk about everything on Monday Monday. Anything that is it could be controversial. It could be Christ. It could be anything happening in the world. Whatever it is that's impacting our lives, that's what I would talk about. But Monday Mandate was birthed out of me listening to God. Now, a lot of people don't believe that God still speak. I'm here to tell y'all, for y'all that's in this or that's on this TV, that's on this Facebook, I'm telling y'all, God is still speaking to his people. I'm telling you. So I was sitting in my living room one day. And I wasn't wasn't praying for anything in specific. And I heard God clearly tell me that I have to go to Facebook. Now, at the time, I didn't have a Facebook account. I didn't have one. And I said, Facebook? I said, come on, Lord. No, no, Lord, they, they, they can't be right. Is this me telling myself? Is this God telling me? And I had to get a confirmation from God. And I said, okay, what am I going to do on Facebook? And he said, ministry. Come I on. Said, I said, okay, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do. And he, get, he didn't give me many instructions. He just told me to do. And what I did was I went on immediately the next Monday. And I, and I, I told the viewers, I said, listen, I don't know what's going to happen. All I knew is next week, I will be starting a new program. It's going to be called the Monday Mandate. I didn't know what I was going to talk about. I didn't know. And I was nervous. I was outside of my element. And I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. But I heard God. And what, what I got out of that was, is that God is trying to get me to be obedient for a reason. It wasn't about Facebook. It wasn't about ministry. It was the obedience. And out of Monday mandate, see, this is why I see I'm, I'm about to run through this house. Out of Monday mandate, birthed so many different other things that I've got so many connections from other people. That is how I wound up on the Now Network on TV with Dr. Nia G and much love, Pastor Renee, because I heard what God said and I did. I was so proud of the little bit that he gave me and I took care of it. Now God is multiplying that in, 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 in a very drastic amount that I could not even think of. And I just thank God that he allowed me to hear him. I, I thank God that I, that I obeyed his voice and I knew that was him talking to me. But that Monday mandate, I, I don't know how long I'm going to do it, all I know is that I'm trying to affect change mm -hmm. in a society that it really in a nation that has turned its back on God. I'm trying to give people applicable tools that they can use on a daily basis for them to say so. So they, so, so they won't have an excuse anymore and say, I don't know. So I bring a biblical perspective, even with even with something that's, that may be 
dealing with the government. I always bring it back to the word of God to show them how we are going to benefit even through a negative crisis. Amen. Amen. So let me let me just tell you this. I did not ask for Lens of Faith Speaks. I did not ask for this. I was <laughs> sitting in my apartment one day. Yeah. And, you know, I've started because I, I PCS to Georgia and I've been separated from my husband and my children. And one day God, clear, just like you said, he clearly spoke to me and told me that I need to be speaking on um he didn't say facebook but he just told me i needed to be speaking in the public so my first thought was was okay i'm gonna get on the stage and i'm gonna do all this talking and i'm gonna come up with these topics i'm gonna talk 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 and when i said that out of my mouth god it's almost like i felt like god was whooping me and was like i didn't tell you to do that that's not what i said <laughs> so i had to go back in my prayer room and ask god okay what you say let me make sure i hear you clearly this time you know, and so God said, no, I want you to interview people to shine your light on them so that the world can see that there are a lot of people out here with a message that's prospering and that has, you know, a word for other people. Yeah. And, and I heard them. You're going to be side by side. You're going to be doing panel interviews. It's going to be more than one person sometimes. And I heard that clearly and I wrote it down immediately. I wrote it down. And all of a sudden I said, OK, it's going to be a podcast. Lens of Faith Speaks. And lo and behold, mm -hmm. I started season one. Now I'm in season four. Episode five had no idea that it was just going to take off like this. I had no idea. Didn't ask for it. It just fell on me. God said, here, here you go. Now let me see if you're going to be obedient with it. And there's been a lot of days that I was like, I don't feel like doing this podcast today. Yeah. Even when I was sick, I don't feel like doing this podcast today. But something inside of me stirred me up and said, I don't care what you're feeling. You're going to do it. If you schedule somebody and you're not dying, you're going to do this podcast. So mm -hmm. I have been, uh, you know, obedient all this time and i'm continuing to press forward lean forward and uh i gotta say that juanita bynum is one of my mentor my virtual mentors and yeah. i have been following her i've been in the word of god i've been walking and let me tell you i in the midst of the warfare on my life i continue to look to god for his help and guidance yeah. through that higher process and sometimes people say you don't look like you're going through nothing but they don't know but my testimony when i come out this thing is going to be all powerful all yeah. powerful because not many people know about lens of faith but once i'm done with this warfare that god has got me on hey it, I, I just can't even get the words out it's it's going to be all powerful i already know it because it's not something I asked for, it's something God uh, anointed me with and gave me, and he's going to give me the resources to go to greater heights, and I know he is. I know he that's, is. That's right. He's going to do it because of your obedience. Yeah. The Bible tells us that obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. We can give all the tithes, all the offerings, all we want, but if we don't be obedient to God, there, there's, there's no other bigger blessing we're going to get other than the obedience. And God is going to bless whatever it is you put your hands on because of your obedience. And if you stay connected to God and continue to hear his voice, don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the people that say that they're, they're trying to push you to another level too early. Hear God first. What does God have to say about the situation? And once we continue to stay with our ear toward heaven and obey God, everything will fall in place. And another thing sowing seeds you know i wasn't a big seed store back in the day i ain't really know too much about sowing seeds i used to put mm -hmm. my little offering in the in the church or whatever but now i am uh so educated on sacrificial sowing seeds yeah. and I, I know what it means and i've seen it manifest in my own life praise god thank you jesus yeah. Spirit. Sowing seeds is so important and people don't even realize the importance on sowing seeds. And I used to sow a little. And now you know what I do? I ask God, God, how much do you want me to sow? And he tell me I get a number every time I ask God, how much am I supposed to sow? He tell me a number. So, and I'm guilty of, of saying sometimes, well, I don't want to sow that. <laughs> okay. And then he convicted me in that thing. Like, 
I told you to sow X, Y, and Z, and you, you sold this. Okay, so now I've grown to know what God tells me to sow. That's what I sow. Everything yes, I have now, I sow it. It's a reason for it. And it's yep. all again, it goes back to that obedience mechanism. Can you trust me in what you cannot see? Can you trust me even though you don't have all the details? Can you do what I ask you to do? Can you do what I tell you to do even when it seems unclear to you? And that's that's how God moves. And I, I love how he does it because there's always a surprise, always a blessing around the corner. He's not having you to do something that's going to kill you. He's doing all things to cultivate us. Yep, and some of us don't even recognize it, but I know I'm going through a uh, a season of um, pre preparation, I should say, yeah. preparing yeah. me for what's to come. So I am just, you know, constantly walking and praying. And I, I think I pray more now than I ever have in my entire life. <laughs> I found myself just walking in the room, just praying and uh, getting in my car, just praying and riding That's in my right. car, praying and walking to the building, praying and leaving work, praying. And it seems like every all day I'm just praying in, in the job. I'm praying. I get down. And a lot of people don't get down on their knees no more. They just pray from they see. I get down on my face and I still pray down That's on right. my I lay prostrate before the Lord. And I still pray that way too. And I'm like, you know, it's just something about the posture of when you praying, you, you hear better. You can see what God is trying to show you. And I'm absolutely grateful for my mom, Judy, um, you know, showing me a different way of how to pray. And, you know, I'm in rules of engagement now. Cindy Trim has blessed my life. Dr. Yeah, Cindy awesome. my life. And I am, um, you know, buried in that rules of engagement. And it, it has, you know, changed my life. It has changed my entire life. Amen. That's good. Posture is important. When you, get on, when you get on your knees, it's, it's a sign of humility. Amen. When you lay prostrate before God, it's a sign of humility. Amen. I want to thank you all who have joined us uh, on the live line tonight. I'm interviewing uh, Reverend Clarence Cox, a native of Chicago. And uh, we're talking about failure not being an option. OK, thank you all for joining us. Please share the broadcast. If you're joining the replay, please hashtag replay. So let's dive back in. I know, you know, sometimes the Lord, the Holy Spirit just moves, you know, so it's the Lord does it. whatever's going on. But I want to talk about um, your responsibility of a, being a father and a husband. How do you support your children and your wife in regards to failure not being an option? Well, again, it goes back to words of encouragement. It goes back to that. Um, when you're dealing with, when you have a spouse, when you have children, you have to validate them. They have to feel validated, um, especially by the man of the house. Um, when, when they're going through different things, you have to be able to have an opening and listening ear. Listening is not just about you speaking. You have to be able to soak in what the what the person is going through and be a listening ear and just tell them everything is going to be okay and to assure them that you're there for them and to and to to give them lessons that, that they need to learn in order for them to go the extra mile because a lot of times in family the family dynamic is so is so unique because we all have different schedules and if we allow our schedules to get the best of us we tend to leave behind those people that got us to the place where we are so we have to be able to have um, the time in order to to allow family to be the focal point. When my wife goes through goes through things, I don't just say, oh, Lord, here we go again. I don't do that. What I do is I say, babe, what's wrong with you? Is everything OK? Talk to me. And she'll sit down and she'll talk to me for hours if she could um, about different things. And I just sit there and I just give her words of encouragement. I tell her what God tells me if he's speaking to me at the time. And I and I and, and I pray. I pray for my family. I cover my family because I have a large family and I know how the, the enemy works. If the enemy can't get to you, he'll use those that are closest to you. you he said. will do that. And I, I cover my family in prayer because we have so many things. There are so many kids being kidnapped. There are people, there are grown women, grown men getting kidnapped and they have no idea what these people are. And I know how the enemy works and the enemy will try to destroy you from the inside out. And one of the ways that he can mess with you is through your family. And so I just I really give my family the time for them to be able to download what they feel so they can feel the release. And then I take what they've given me and I pray about it. Amen. 
you know, every morning I get up and I pray and I ask God to put a hedge of protection around my family because we're separated, yeah. you know, and yeah. I have to uh, cover them, you know, and when I'm home, I'm home now. Thank God. Um, I anoint them with oil, you know, and I, I speak life over them because there's so much going on on the Internet. There's so much going on on these phones. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on in the schools. There's so much going on on the walk to the bus stop. You know, right. we got to cover our children and our spouses. We have to cover them and anoint them and, you know, let God, you know, place their hedge of protection around them and keep them safe from all her harm and danger. Because like you said, mm -hmm. when the devil can't get to you. He's seeing you unaffected by what he's trying to do to you. He'll go to the next person. Well, let me go get the, the weak one. You know, the mm -hmm. one that I know I, I can access this portal and get to him or get to her or get to them. You know, so we have to keep our, our family covered. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Well, let's let's take you back to your earlier years real quick. Um, as you joined the military and, you know, I've been to basic training myself and, you know, they talk yeah. about being mentally tough and physically tough. So tell us about how that resonates with you and failure not being an option when you were going through basic training. I had a no quit attitude. I had a, I had a no quit attitude. Um, I saw people at basic training that were falling out left and right. I, we started off with maybe 150 people. We graduated with about 45 people. And I said, I was not going to be that one. I was not, I refused. I, I don't care what I have to do. I'm not going back to Chicago the same way. I'm not, I'm, I, I got too much stuff to do than to sit here and to fail. And I had someone, I had a drill, a drill instructor, and he was a corporal. Now, most times you don't see a corporal as a drill instructor. Right. You don't see that. And I saw how squared away he was. I saw how serious he was about his craft. And I said, I want to be just like him. And I used him as a motivational tool to get me through those 15 weeks of boot camp. It was 15 weeks at the time. It's probably 12 or 11 now. But I use that and I also use my family. Mm -hmm. I cannot allow them to see me to fail. Um, I, when you adopt a no quit attitude, you're basically saying there's nothing going to stop me from achieving my goals. And I not only adopted it in the natural, I also adopted it in the spiritual. And so I also leaned on God through boot camp because it was some times I wanted to quit. It was some times I was like, this is too much. This doesn't make sense. Why am I going through all this? Why am I sending myself through all of this? And it, it, it was all to give it to a place where I was being groomed. I was being shaken from the boyish stage oh. and transformed into a man. And I thank God for that. Amen. Basic training was hard, but um, I actually graduated soldier of the cycle. And as I was going through basic training, I was like, oh, my God. Well, I had four years of JRTC first. So okay. I can like, okay, I love being a soldier. I like leadership. I like, you know, structure and organization. So let me get this a shot. So I got the basic training and these people started yelling at me. And I was like, who they yelling yeah. at? <laughs> who are they yelling at? Okay, that's number one. <laughs> and then it just took me, I don't know, maybe a couple of days to get, you know, adjusted to all the yelling and screaming. And I was just like, you know, they're just being loud. I, I just thought of their voices as being like, you know, those bull horns. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not going to let that affect me because I know how to scream too, you know? So <laughs> I'm not going to let that be my downfall and I'm not going to fail at this. I'm going to come out on top. And I actually came out as soldier of the cycle. So I was, you know, really excited to uh, get through basic training, but in the, in the process of going through basic training, which is also one of the chapters and rules of engagement, by the way, um, it is, it is. Uh, I lost some people in basic training because they didn't have the will to fight. They mm. gave up because they said it was too hard. I don't want to run. I don't want to do push-ups. I don't want to do sit-ups. I don't want structure. It's some of the stories that I heard as the people started falling off. Mm -hmm. and, and one person in particular, I remember this young lady, she says, I want to go back home. And I asked, her, I said, well, what is home like? She said, I live on the street with my mom and I came here to uh, make a better living for my mom. So I said, well, if you go back home now, how, how are you going to be able to do that? You got another yeah. plan? 
And she said, you know what? I, I don't have another plan, but I can't take this. I'm mentally drained, she told me. And, you know, I talked to her for over an hour one day while we were in training. And as I saw her packing her stuff up, getting ready to go. And she never she never stayed. She let, she ended up leaving and I never saw her again. And so mm -hmm. I just wondered, you know, I really wonder whatever happened to her and her mom because of the story she told me. But, you know, mm -hmm. some people, they just give up, you yeah. know, because they don't know where they're headed. They don't know where they're going and they're afraid to change, to make that change and that sacrifice because of what they always know. They want to be comfortable and what they always know instead of, you know, going the extra mile, doing something different and trying it out to the best of their ability. When you put your all into something, yeah, you'll see the change. I guarantee you, because I put my all into being obedient into God right now. And I'm seeing a change in me personally. Yeah. I'm seeing a change in me being a mother. I'm seeing a change in me, me being a wife. I'm seeing a change in me being a, a, a steward of, of the Lord, you know, a servant leader. And I'm looking back over my life and was like, I never thought I would be here where I am today because of the life that I, I lived and how I grew up and stuff like that. I never thought I'd be right where I'm at right now, you know? Awesome. So I just... I thank God for basic training because, it, you know, whatever basic training you go to, not even military training, any type of basic training in life teaches you the, the bare necessities that you need and gives you the resources and tools to excel in whatever it is that you're doing. It arms you with what you need. So if you think about taking a, a Christian through basic training for the Lord, it all starts with the Bible, opening up the word of God and learning mm -hmm. the word. God from Genesis to Revelations. Are you in Bible study? What are your basic training rules and tools and policies and procedures? Because the Lord gives it to us and black right. and white, it's there. And you know, I used to hate Bible study because it was so boring to me. Back in the day, I'm like, my grandma want me to go to this Bible study. My mama want me to go to Bible study and I'm just going to fall asleep. But now I'm energized. I'm enthusiastic. I'm like, I got to get the Bible study because it's teaching me the basics, the basic training of where I need to go, how I'm going to get there and what I need to go through to get there. To That's true. So I absolutely love Bible study. I'm excited about it. And I, it's almost like I can't wait for Wednesdays to come. Because I'm like, and, and even when Wednesday ain't here, I'm still opening up my Bible. <laughs> That's right. Because I'm like, I got to feed my soul. It's on fire for change. Being a change yeah. agent for the Lord. My soul is on fire. So I'm constantly, you know, looking for the word of God. What, what is it? What is it that you want to show me today, Lord? Where do you got me? And sometimes I, I take my Bible and just let it fall open. And where it fall open, I start reading. Sometimes I do that. And I say, God, show me what I need to get from this scripture today, Lord. Show it to me. And he shows it to me. I get a word from him every time. Any Anything I read in the Bible, I get a word from it and I apply it to where I need to apply it to. We have to do that. That's basic training for the Lord. That's Amen. right. That's right. A lot of people don't realize that God takes us through basic training a lot. Mm -hmm. And the basic training is designed to, to break you down in order to build you back up. Yes. And oftentimes we become... We're, we're like clay, you know, we're, we're, we're the clay, he's the potter. We become marred in his hands. So what he has to do is yeah. when, when we're broken down, he then has the ability to build us back up. As long as his hands are on your life, he is responsible for making sure that we are built up, but we also have to do the daily disciplines to allow him to do that. Amen. Omika said, I was the second oldest in my basic training cycle and it was very hard trying to keep up with those youngsters. I hear you. I had some older yeah. people in my cycle too. They were like late 20s, almost about to turn 30. And here it is, I'm 17 years old. And they looking at me like, slow down. No, I'm like, you got to catch up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, speed up. That's right. <laughs> so I know right. exactly what she said. I know exactly what she's talking about. So before we get off of here, give us three powerful words of encouragement for tonight. We're going we're gonna to make them quick. First one is, I want to encourage somebody to let you know that you are enough. 
Stop feeling like you're inadequate. Stop feeling as if though you don't have enough to serve God. It does not matter how far you've gone in life. It doesn't matter what you've done. God can still use you. The second one is don't give up. Don't give up on your goals. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on what it is that you know that God has within you. If you have a book within you, start writing now. And God is dealing with me on that. Um, Don't give up on what God is saying to you because God is showing you so many different things. And we have to be able to take heed and obey the voice of God. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on the job that is paying your bills unless God is telling you to move. Listen to the voice of God, but do, don't, whatever you do, don't give up. Don't give up on life. Life is too precious for you to commit suicide. Your life is worth value. And if God created you, you have, you have a purpose and a plan for God. And the last one is stay focused. Stay focused on where God wants you to go. Stay focused on what God wants you to be. The road ahead may be long. The road ahead may have some winding and twisting turns. It may go up and down. It may be a roller coaster. But that road, as long as it has a stable pavement and God is allowing your feet to move, you can progress into the manifestation of what he's revealing. Everyone has a purpose. All of us have a plan for God. But we have to stay focused on his will, his ways, and his word by doing what's necessary to commune with God. Amen. God bless you for those powerful words. Tell us what you got coming up next. Where are you going to be? Oh, Lord have mercy. Well, right now we are headed to Kenya, Africa. We're headed. um, Yeah, myself, uh, Dr. Nia G, much love, Pastor Renee, um, Apostle Nelson, Omika McNeil, and, 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 and many others. We're headed to Africa to do ministry for, I believe, two weeks. And um, we're just asking for people to pray for us um, as we go minister to the nations. They are expecting us. They are excited um, about the move of God that's getting ready to happen. I am excited because I know I know what it is to minister to people that are hungry for God, that are energized for God. And so that's my that's the major one I have coming up. I have many more that has not been set in stone. I don't want to. Um, you know, put it out there yet. But right now, the major one is Africa. And we're trying, well, I think we're believe we're leaving here the uh, 9th of June, I believe. Amen. To God be the glory. We will be praying for you all. And Thank I hope you. we have a night of prayer before you all exit the United States and uh, just come together and pray over you all, um, you know, as you go forward. Because that's yeah. really going to be a blessing in many, many ways, in many directions. Yes. Calling on global awareness, the clarion call. Right. Come on, yes. Amen. Right. Amen. So tell the listening audience how to reach out to you, how to connect with you, and um, give us the dates and times of your shows. Well, we have a show coming on tonight. As a matter of fact, 930 Eastern Standard Time. It's called The Post Where Life Begins. We will be on the thenownetwork.org. That's T-H-E-N-O-W-N-E-T-W-O-R-K dot org. Tonight, 930 Eastern Standard Time. Come join my team, myself, Dr. Nia G, and much love, Pastor Renee, as we are committed to bringing forth the word and impacting the masses. I can be reached on Instagram at CR cr.cox.750. I can also be reached on Twitter at crcox5, crcox5. Um, you would like to reach me on, on Facebook. There's two different pages I have. I have what they call the Monday Mandate page. And you can also uh, contact me personally on crcox. That's my, my personal um, Facebook page. If you'd like to email me, um, my email address is clarence.cox. That's C L A R. E-N-C-E dot C-O-X 203 at gmail.com. And we look forward to um, to what God is doing within us. But I will tell you all this. Tune on tonight. Tonight. We need your support on the now network dot org. We'll be we'll be airing at 930 Eastern Standard Time. God bless you all. They can get there on the Internet, correct? They can. Okay. They can get there on the Internet. Yeah, directly. All right. That's a lot. I'm just making sure I covered everything. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook. and email. And then your email. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning in with us tonight on this show. I pray that this show has blessed you in one way or another. 
When we talk about people failing, they fail because they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. What is your purpose? What is your why? Have you ever sat and thought about that? Ask yourself why and give yourself an answer. Yeah. We have to be conscious of where we're headed in life because without direction, the people perish. With that being said, you have to gain a relationship with the Lord, with God. Yeah. Sit with him, pray with him, study with him by reading the word of God. Yeah. Get it into your spirit. God will lead and guide you where you are supposed to be going. You don't have to be lost. And failure is not an option. If you want to succeed in life, take that first step to seek a relationship with the Lord. I did it. Reverend Clarence Cox did it. And so can you. Yeah. God bless you for tuning in with us tonight. This is Thursday night at eight with Lens of Faith. But it's a special episode. I thank you all for joining us. Reverend Cox, stay right there. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I would like to thank all my followers and listeners for tuning in to today's show. You have been listening to Walking in Your Purpose, Thursday night at 8 with Lens of Faith. Connect with me now. I want to hear from you. Please like, share, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Lens of Faith. God bless.